from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted fella. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. We're doing something that we... We rarely do. We are devoting our entire program to an article that I read, and many of you sent this in, by the way. Many of you saw it and sent it to us, um, called Child Man in the Promised Land by Kay Heimowitz. She's the editor of City Journal. And uh, and by the way, uh, Kay, where, where is City Journal located? What is it? City Journal is a uh, publication of the Manhattan Institute, which is a public policy think tank in New York City. And by the way, I'm not the editor. I'm a contributing editor. Slightly different. Okay. Uh, well, but as I've told you, with the uh, various edits that are done on your piece, yeah. I, I don't know if you've seen them all. <laughs> various things get cut out <laughs> or truncated. And so uh, you, never, <laughs> you never know if you're getting the whole piece or all the information. Uh, very nice. Uh, all right. Uh, this piece, uh, for people who haven't seen it, you can go to our website, blowmeuptom.com, and we link right through to the City Journal website, and you can uh, read it for yourself if you like. Uh, it talks about people who are a lot like the people who listen to this show. And so the question becomes this. Um, you talk in this piece about men being perpetual adolescents and not growing up, as you put it. Uh, but if guys want to live a life of playing basketball and video games and hanging out with their buddies and uh, having a few drinks, if they're responsible enough to show up at work every day and pay their bills and not impregnate others, what's wrong with that? Well, you know, <laughs> there are a couple couple of answers I would give to that. One is, uh, if we, what happens if we have um, lots of guys doing that, lots of very smart and lovely, talented guys who are doing that? Uh, that's a lot of people who are not helping to create the next generation, caring for the next generation. You know, I think of adulthood this way. It's not just that you become a self-sufficient working person who can, you know, buy their own home or, or at least have, provide shelter and food and that sort of thing, but that you're also taking an interest in the future of your society and um, thinking about, you know, what, what contribution you can make. Now, the vast majority of people decide that that contribution is going to be through children. Uh, some people uh, don't do it that way, but they are thinking about uh, what it is that they want to give back uh, to, especially in, in our case, I think, to a society that's been very, very good to many of us. Now, I have said on this program, and I, I, look, I, I'm, I'm going to completely be straight with you and not, because I, I, I really want to take this very seriously, because our show uses a lot of irony. A lot of sarcasm and oh, frankly. Oh, I can do that too, Tom. No, no, I understand that. And frankly, if, frankly, if we do it right, it's generally pretty crude because you know what kind of stuff guys like. You clearly, you know that from the piece you wrote. So, but I, I'm going to be straight with you. When I talk to the guys on the radio about marriage, I say that marriage is for the poor and dumb. They're going to continue to crank out Xerox copies of themselves. That there'll be plenty of children in the future. Uh, why should someone who's intelligent, has money, has potential, has a career, uh, why should they spend their resources on something like that? And, and your, your idea is that the, most, uh, the best way to spend your resources is on giving yourself pleasure. Absolutely, and why not? Well, I'm not saying that one shouldn't spend some money on giving themselves pleasure, but is that, you know, what are you leaving behind? What, what kind of life are you, are you defining for yourself? What kind of meaning are you defining for yourself? You're saying that's enough for you. You're saying that's, that's life enough for a and lot you want to live That's enough for a lot of guys. Huh? That's enough for a lot of guys. Uh, it, it, it may be for a lot of guys. I actually don't believe that it's that enough for most guys. 
it was enough. It was enough that you had to write this piece. <laughs> I mean, you no, can't you, know, you can't have it both ways. You can't have it both ways. You can't no, say that this no, is. No, wait a minute, Tom. <laughs> most of the child men will marry. You know, and I said that at the end. Most of them will and will marry, and they will have kids. That's what tends to happen in this in this world, uh, despite the existence of child men in their twenties and thirties. Yes, but by the same token. If a guy waits until he is a doctor, is a lawyer, is an architect, has a practice, has money, has funds, buys himself a house, he has insured himself against divorce, uh, where a woman can't take his house away, where a woman cannot take half of his law practice or half of his architectural practice, uh, where a woman cannot uh, uh, take what he has. And on top of that, and uh, in, in the way we would normally say it on the program, um, if you wait till 35, 40 to get married, you can still marry a 23-year-old. <laughs> well, you're, you're really confirming what I, what I wrote, or rather the inspiration behind my piece, which is that women are pretty unhappy with you, child men. Uh, and you can see why. In other words, here you are at, at age uh, 40 having a good old time, and they're looking for husbands. And where are you? You're looking at the 23-year-old. Right. Well, then again, it's uh, should I be making myself available to some woman to start dipping into my bank account or taking but up space in my home for tchotchkes and knickknacks? No, uh, but what kind of what kind of companionship do you want in life? You know, do you want to have just a trophy wife who you know will look pretty and young and make you feel young? I've gotten beyond the desire for a trophy wife. My companionship is my my friends, my guy friends. The, the, that's my companionship. Uh -huh. uh, women are not there for companionship or conversation. Uh, they are there to provide, uh, whether it be uh, arm candy or sexual pleasure or uh, occasional entertainment. As I, as I said, I have a stripper pole in my home. And then the rest of the time, I, if I need to talk about politics or books or the election, I talk to my guy friends about that. Well, um I don't know exactly what to say to that, except, again, I think that if you look at the surveys if you uh, uh, of young people, what do they want, what do they look forward to in life, they do expect to find companionship with the opposite sex. And, uh, you know, you may be the exception to the rule, um, and I, you sound like a very bitter man. <laughs> well, I, it's not that I'm a bitter man, because, in fact, I, 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 as I tell the audience, I'm the happiest I've ever been today. Um, I have been through divorces. Um, I had prenups, so I didn't get dinged too badly. And I didn't have children, so I didn't get dinged too badly. And I'm not an alimony payer, and I don't believe in alimony. And uh, so from that standpoint, I don't really have a lot to be bitter about. I'm on good terms with the people I was married to in the past. I just don't see why I should be appropriating my resources to them. Yeah. Well, again, as I said, I think that for most people, uh, they look forward to some kind of strong, you know, very powerful connection to uh, someone of the opposite sex. I think that's true for men and women. They may not want it now if they're 25. They may not want it when they're 28 or 30, even for that matter. But it is a goal for most people. And I think most people want to have children. You said very clearly you do not. But I think, uh, you know, but even if even if I did. I wouldn't marry somebody to have children, and the reason I wouldn't do it is because if the marriage didn't work out, I would have to pay alimony. Well, you're going to have to pay. Well, you, know, you don't we have can, to pay we alimony. Can talk about the, we can talk about the laws, that uh, alimony laws, and, you know, perhaps they, you know, there's, a, there's an argument that we want to change them, although I'm not sure I would agree with you for reasons we could go into later. And I, and I also don't believe in handing over my resources that I've worked to create all these years. You know, I've created this radio program. I have a number of service marks that I've registered. Um, I own a business. Um, I don't want to run the risk I'm going to have to hand them over or 50% of them over to somebody else. Well, as you know, there are ways to avoid that these days, um, and many men uh, do get pre. And how many of the? How many of how many? Yeah, well, uh, some women do, but uh, I don't know how many women you've dated, Kay. But I can, <laughs> I can tell you that uh, women are very, very uh, negative towards prenups for the most part. Very yeah, few yeah. of them are willing to sign prenups. Right. Well, uh, you know, unless yeah. they have more than I have. Yeah. Well, you know, they they see it as your. Uh, d trying to deprive them and not trusting them, and which you don't. <laughs> well, well, and as I always say, it's not, it's not a matter of whether I trust them. I don't trust judges and attorneys who generally make these determinations. Yeah. And well, in New York State, where you live, it's pretty severe. 
Look, Tom, what you're describing, I think, is a very sad situation of the relations between the sexes, and I'm getting a big, big dose of this in the email that I'm getting from my readers. There is, and on both sides, women and men, the women are completely disgusted with the men uh, that they're meeting. They find them immature. They find them uh, fail, you know, unwilling to commit. I mean, <laughs> you can see why. Uh, uh, they find them uh, 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 self-involved uh, and unable to really carry on a relationship. But, you know, you, in a way, what you're saying is, well, yeah, we can't because we're not interested in relationships. That's what you're saying. And, you know, if you have women who are still interested in you, which I suspect you do because you have a lot to offer them. <laughs> because because people love to walk into a bakery even if they can only smell the bread. Well, okay, but do you like being being liked for something like that? Is that what you want to be? It's part of, for? it's yes, you know why? Because it's part of who I am. It is a quantifiable representation of everything I've accomplished. All right, and then, uh, you know... Another... It's like being liked for other accomplishments, like liked for being an artist, liked for being an author, liked for uh, being uh, the winner of the strongman competition. How about, how about for being you? Have you ever had anybody well, like you for that? My money is part of who I am. It is part of it, Tom, but you, you, you do know that a lot of women are interested in the money and not you. That's perfectly, you o- that's perfectly okay because I'm interested in getting them naked and not interested <laughs> in having a conversation with them, so it's a fair deal. Well, you're right. It is a fair deal if that's the way you want to treat people. Now, let me, ask you, another, let me ask you another question here because you talk in this article as you're trying to make your case that men are perpetual adolescents about the kind of entertainment that men enjoy, uh, whether it be movies with Adam Sandler and Jim Carrey or certain kinds of TV shows, what have you. It, it, no mention in here of the kind of television uh, programming or movies that women enjoy. There's the implication that women are interested in serious novels and serious film and serious theater but who is watching shows like the insider entertainment tonight extra anything that has to do with britney spears paris hilton lindsay lowen who is reading and consuming all of that material you and, and, are I, you couldn't be more correct i totally agree with you i think that both <laughs> women and men in this culture are very attracted to trash why would i discuss uh, uh, the the political uh, ramifications of 2008 with somebody who's more concerned about whether britney spears is in rehab than she is about uh, the, when the primary is taking place well if that's the only kind of women that you're meeting i would suspect that you're looking in the wrong places well, or maybe I've, for the wrong quality well then i go ahead to tell you something i also tell the listeners, and that is, the more attractive a woman is, generally, the less likely it is that she knows who's running for president. <laughs> well, I don't know. I've never done uh, the kind of research you have, Tom, on this. I've, I, I've been doing in-the-field research. Yes. Uh, I'm, an, I'm an amateur anthropologist. <laughs> Uh, and I don't profess to be uh, much of a beauty myself, but I certainly know very beautiful women who do know who's running for president uh, and uh, and would are extremely good conversationalists. Yeah, but but uh, but but you know it's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Well, I There's don't just think not so. a I lot think, of yeah, those I think out it's there. The haystack you're looking in. <laughs> you really think so? So you're telling me there are a bunch of nines and tens out there who are anxious to get into a conversation with whether McCain is going to be Clinton. There probably are some. I don't know how many there are. Not and I many. Think if you're that, if you're really that focused on the external only, you know, I mean, you can't, you can make no compromises as far as the uh, the uh, ten factor goes. Then, then you may well, have a problem. It's well, true. when if men are, matter, but here's what, the deal: when men are rich and successful, they don't have to be radio personalities. They can be doctors, lawyers, what have you. They can afford the youngest, hottest women out there. If that's what they're looking for, but you know, those marriages will not last. I mean, let's be realistic. There's a reason. The pictures of Pierce Brosnan's wife uh, are such a news story, and that is because guys who look like Pierce Brosnan and have the money, power, and fame of Pierce Brosnan are never with women that look like that. Yeah. That's why it's a news story. Yeah, no, I agree with you, and that's, you know, that is the, our, the Darwinian way, isn't it, right? It is, uh, you know, you do look for... Water beauty. seeks its own level, I yeah, say it all the time. Exactly. But you also have to realize that you're living in a very complex world that um, in which people generally want more than just that kind of 
connection. That's I know. Oh, by the way, I know women I love to talk about politics with. I just wouldn't want to see them naked. <laughs> well, uh, and you, it sounds like you won't. So uh, I, 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 hope for their, I hope for their sake you do not. <laughs> <laughs> I hope for my sake I do not. We'll take a break. We'll come back and we'll take some calls uh, for our guest, Kay Heibowitz. She's contributing editor for City Journal. Uh, and uh, we will continue with your telephone calls momentarily. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I've been listening to you, and that is the best advice. Keep her out of the house. Oh, my God. She tried to. She's like, oh, I, I need a place to stay for, for just a week. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Go stay no. with one of your gay friends. No, no. That's me. right. That's right. Stay with one of your gay friends is a good answer. I like that. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. Our guest, Kay Heimowitz. Is contributing editor to City Journal. She's based in Brooklyn, New York. And uh, she wrote the piece we are talking about called Child Man in the Promised Land. And it seems to talk an awful lot about the kind of guys who like listening to this program that we do here. Uh, the article is linked on our website, blowmeuptom.com. Uh, if you're near a computer, take a look. Run it up your iPhone. See what she's saying, and uh, you can uh, jump right in here at one 800 800 tom Let's continue our conversation now with our callers at one 800 800 tom Tim on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Tim. How are you doing? And yes, I do care. Doing great. Okay, I had a couple questions for you. Uh, I noticed you said you have two daughters. Are they are they your only kids? No, I have a son. You have a son too. Mm -hmm. Do you have any grandchildren? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I was. What oh, I was gathering oh, you did. <laughs> you think you know what's driving my my article? Yeah, it, it just seems like you're kind of bitter that nobody's taking care of your daughters for you. <laughs> it seems like uh, you're kind of uh, hoping one of us successful guys with our, our stuff together wants to give them that little, you know white picket fence and uh, those babies that you've been waiting for them to have? Well, I, you know, I prefer we didn't get to uh, speculate about my motives on this. Uh, it is true that I tend to, you know, because I have children of a certain age, I tend to become curious about the world they're living in. My, my girls are not looking for somebody to, uh, to give them that picket fence. I mean, they would like to find a good relationship, like most young people would like to find a good relationship. Uh, and I, I actually, as I said earlier in the show, wasn't so much driven by their own experiences as the experience of some slightly older women in their 30s. Um, and also the, just the general um, sense you get from websites from TV shows like or, or, or shows like Sex in the City, uh, that there is this uh, problem between the sexes. You know, I'm going over my email during our breaks and uh, just staggered by the kind of poisonous bitterness that I hear on both sides, men and women, towards each other. So clearly, we are not on the same wavelength here, men and women. And, um, you know, I think that at the very least, this article is bringing that out uh, in the open. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom Catherine on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how are you? I'm doing okay. Hey Kay, I uh, have to say thank you first of all for all that bit of research. That was really great in compiling all that information. I'm a researcher myself, and I just I think that's a really brilliant work that you put together. But I have to side with Tom. I obviously think that there's a lot missing in the marriage paradigm right now. It's not serving society well as a whole, and it needs to be redone or just put to the side like most men have figured out right now. You know, I'm a successful uh, woman at 25. I'm in an open relationship with someone who agrees a lot with what Tom has to say, and it's been wonderful. It's much better than the pre-marriage relationships that most people wanted to have with me in my early 20s, and it's... I think that a lot is being said about going into marriage and popping out kids in a society where there's way too many kids already. So. Uh, well, you know, there are not to wait too many kids. We have a society that's actually going to have a real, what they call, a demographic disequilibrium. That is, we're going to have far too few workers to sustain the kind of life that we, uh, that uh, people expect now for retirees and so on and so forth. And, and so, 
I think there's a real question about your assumption that there are not enough kids. But uh, aside from that, I think one of the things that maybe I should lay out on the table is I, I do most of my writing or a lot of my writing about marriage. It's it's a key interest of mine. And I do think that there is, you know, as you say, um, Catherine, there is something problematic about the marriage paradigm for a lot of people now. And I think one of those things is that they, we expect too much. The kind of companionship uh, that um, Tom wants, for instance, uh, from a woman should not should not be uh, in the form of marriage. I think marriage's primary purpose is to provide a consistent male figure for for children. I mean, that to me is its purpose. It's lost that purpose because we try to make it mean so many other things. Uh, and uh, so I would agree with you that, you know, I, I don't think marriage is for everybody, uh, but I do think it is for people who want to have kids. All of the research that I've looked at suggests that it is better arrangement for children uh, and for the next generation, and uh, that's, that's kind of a, basis, a basic assumption from where I'm coming from. Well, all right there. I could continue to argue against that, but I think I'll let the other callers take a whack at it, too. All right, Thanks, Catherine. Tom. Thank you. Appreciate the call. I noticed no mention of race in your piece that I recall, and your piece really struck me as being about Caucasian men and Caucasian women. Uh, but uh, let's take a look at African Americans for a second. Two thirds of all births in the African American community are out of wedlock. Right. Actually, um, I do mention race in the very, very beginning. I am talking about white guys and white middle class guys. Uh, so, because you're quite right, there there are racial disparities here. Um, about 70 percent of children um, of, of black children today are born to unmarried mothers. The large majority of those children will have either inconsistent or neglig negligible relationships with their fathers. We simply do not know a way to provide close relationships with children, with, between fathers and children without the institution of marriage. It's never happened. As far as I can see, it will never happen. If you want to have a close relationship with your children, uh, you will stay married uh, you know, as much as is possible. You will marry and stay married to their mother. Of course, uh, look around. Uh, the role models, uh, the uh, women that women look up to in this society are the women who say, uh, you know, I, I'm going to go to Africa and adopt, or I'm going to have children whether I'm married or not, because uh, I, who needs a man? Who needs well, a father? Well, you know, th those numbers are still very, very small, Tom. You know, I, again, uh, Catherine Ritter referred to my research before, and they, these are numbers that I'm, you know, looked at fairly carefully. Um, the vast majority of women who are having children without being married are low income. Uh, and uh, from my understanding of what's happening there, they are really limiting the chances of their, the life chances of their children by doing that. And they are not providing men with any role to play, in any strong social role to play. So I think that's very problematic. The women you're talking about, the ones that are going to Africa to uh, adopt children, by the way, I have no problem with that. Those are children who need homes, uh, and I think whoever wants to adopt them, uh, you know, every, whatever decent person wants to adopt them, it's fine. But the people who are actually creating children, um, we, we do know that the uh, relationships that those kids will have with their fathers is very, very complicated by the lack of marriage. Yes, yes, and of course the laws allow women to, uh, or at least uh, the judges allow women frequently to uh, skip town, uh, move to another state with the kid, collect child support checks without ever reporting their whereabouts. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you go to one of these websites of these male rights organizations, yeah. which you may find distasteful, uh, you will see countless stories yeah. of, of men who are pouring tens of thousands of dollars of money they've earned into lawyers and child support checks and attempts to uh, find the uh, kids through private investigators, what have you. And and women are given wide berth to, to just disappear with the kid and never be seen again and just collect that cash. Um, I uh, I think that is a terrible problem, and, and I'm well aware of the misery of uh, men who have been left uh, or feel that they've been left uh, and whose children have been taken away from them, and I think it is a tragedy. And, uh, you know, I'd so like to... So it doesn't make it very appealing to, to take that kind of risk. Yeah. Well, you know, you said that before, and I wanted to ask you, you've been divorced at least at least twice from what I gather. Four times. Four times, excuse me. Um, 
so you have developed a certain over through experience certain ideas about uh, what's possible uh, in the what's possible and what marriage really is, right, which is right. a contractual arrangement in which you form a corporation with somebody that is approved by the Secretary of State of your state right. with the raised seal of the Secretary of State that's placed on there before that marriage certificate is returned to you after you get married, uh, in which uh, you are agreeing to put in half of everything you earn which for stay-at-home moms is frequently nothing or negligible. And then uh, at the end of things don't work out, uh, mom can simply uh, open the vault and take uh, half or more of everything a man has earned. All right. Well, let me let me get back to my to my point, uh, which is that I don't think that young men in their twenties and probably even in their early thirties who have never been married are thinking the way you're describing. In well, other I, words, I, I, I don't agree, and I, and I, I got to tell you why. I, okay. I've been doing this show in this form now for eleven years. And we've been talking about these issues with young men every day for hours, every day. They do think about that. And here's why they think about it. Because we have the first generation of adult men who are raised by single mothers. Yeah. They've seen divorce. Yeah. Even though they may not have been married themselves or may not have the bitterness of past experience by getting married, they have seen what divorce is all about. This is why the median age of, of marriage for men continues to to go up it's because they have been victims of divorce as children yeah no i think you're right about one thing that is that the divorce culture that that uh started in the late 60s and and really took off in the 70s has been uh very damaging to young people's uh, feelings and about the possibilities of of marriage however statistically uh the children of divorce are though they are more likely to divorce themselves uh, don't tend, they often don't tend to avoid marriage. They often marry actually rather early. Uh, I think, I would guess, because they're hoping to provide for themselves what their parents have taken away, that is a, uh, a stable family. And, uh, what are the divorce statistics for people who marry young? Oh, they're very, they're they're high. Uh, you know, it depends what you mean by young. Eighty percent. No, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, uh, it depends what you mean. You, if you get married teenagers. before age twenty-one. Well, yes, before 21, but when you're well, by the time you get to about 25, those rates don't seem to differ that much from somebody at 30 or 35. Right, and 25 is an age that I give men. I say, if you insist on getting married, why get married before 25? Why even have a serious relationship no, before I, age 25? I, would, I think that marriage before 25 is. A little bit risky, depends on the kid, you know, and, and if it were my kid, I'd be sort of wondering and a little worried about it, but. Um, you know, what happens, I think, is once you get past 25 and the, the years go on and on and on and you're in and out of serial relationships, you are, have gone through many breakups, you've experienced a lot of the bitterness that of a, of really of a kind of divorce in many cases because, you know, many, many young people have multi-year relationships that are fairly serious, but for various reasons they break up. I think that that adds to a sense of bitterness and um, a lack of confidence about the future that really is very damaging to marriage. I just happen to believe that uh, people should have confidence in themselves. They should feel good about living alone. They should feel good about being with themselves. And they should feel good about uh, having a home that is theirs, where they don't get told uh, not to put their feet up, or they can't watch football, or they can't have a flat screen in the living room, or all the various things that men are getting tired of being told. Well, um, you know, I, I don't agree. I think that people, we are social creatures. Uh, we want that kind of stability. We want those kinds of stable, long-term relationships. Uh, human beings have always desired those things, sought, sought ways to, to define themselves through their relationships, through their families. And I don't, just don't think that that will ever go away. All right, we'll see what the uh, public thinks as we continue our, our conversation with uh, Kay Heimowitz. Uh, she is contributing editor to City Journal. Time, time, time. Like this. Like this. 1 800 5800 Tom. What do you have against women? Nothing. My manhood, future. It's the Tom Likes Show. Tom Likes Show. 1 800 5800 Tom is our telephone number. We are joined by Kay Heimowitz, 
contributing editor to City Journal. And uh, she has authored a piece uh, that we've been talking about called Child Man in the Promised Land. Your telephone calls continue here at 1-800-5-800-TOM. If you'd like to read the piece, go to blowmeuptom.com. We have linked right through to the City Journal website, and you can you can read the piece for yourself and then jump right in. Let's say hello to Tim. Tim is in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Father. How you doing? Son, I'm doing great. Fantastic. Hey, Kay, how you doing today? Fine. Good. Hey, Tom, I definitely agree with your side. Um, I'm 41 been married almost 10 years to my wife. We've got three kids, and both me and my wife say it all the time. If we had to do it over again, we would not have kids so that we can go out and live the Tom Likas lifestyle. So we can go out and drink when we want, travel when we want, and do the things that we want to do when we want to do them. Uh, kids take a lot of money out of your pocket. Marriage is extremely difficult and very tiring being with the same person after just even a few years. My wife would agree to the same thing. We have this conversation, like I said, on a fairly regular basis. Um, but we stay together strictly for our kids. Um, and that's the biggest reason. But, you know, when our kids are 18, who knows what's going to happen? Uh, my guess is we'll probably end up getting divorced just because it's it's just too tough. And it takes too much out of your pocketbook. Um, you know, would love to have the uh, the big house and uh, be able to leave whenever I want, and so would my wife. But, uh, as I said, it's just too tough and you can't do it. We both are working professionals. We work our butts off. Um, but, again, my wife has said it. You know, it, it wouldn't happen if we had to go back in, in hindsight and do it all over again. She wouldn't even do it again. It's just not worth it. Oh, can I? Well, I, I'd like to respond to that, of course. Sure. Um, you know, look, this is a big country with many, many individuals having all sorts of different experiences. And I admit, having raised three children of my own, that there are many, many times you want to bolt and just get out. I mean, it's really tough uh, and expensive and all of the things you're saying. But, uh, you know, it's still question of what what do you want to leave behind you what kind of life do you want to live what matters in your life uh you're saying tom uh, Tom, and i think your caller is saying well maybe what really matters is just my pleasure you know is is that i have a good time Uh, and i i just don't think that you get to uh, a later age and you look back and say you know what was really great about my life it's that I had a lot of women and I, uh, I had a big house. and I, I don't think that's what people look back on and think really matters. I think they think about their families. I think they think about their kids. They think about their long, the, the deeper relationships um, and the more powerful experiences they've had. Uh, and I just, you know, there's no way to convince anybody of that out there, I guess. Uh, but that's my that's my view of what, well, I, what... Guess, I guess, Kay, but, you know, my kids are a joy, and I, I do take some enjoyment out of them um, and watching them grow up and the things that they do. But, you know, in the long run, it's it's just a huge struggle. It's extremely tiring. A working professional, putting in a ton of hours, trying to grow my career. I could have grown my career a lot faster without being tied down, without having kids, because I can't move because my kids are in one of the best school systems out here, and I can't just pick up and move because I've got to think of them first. Unfortunately, not my career which holds me back, which holds my wife back. I want to pick up and go to Napa Valley in California to go, you know, go do a wine tour some weekend with my wife. We can't. You mean you mean you mean like you mean like I do. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, Tom, exactly. (laughs) Well you know what? You will be able to do that. (laughs) When you're very old, Tim you'll wheel yourself around the Napa Valley. I've got one foot in the grave and the other one's on the walk. Well, you'll have your life alert in one hand, and uh, you'll be there in the gurney, and they'll be wheeling you into Barringer. It's going to be very exciting. Now, now uh, Tom, you have to be more polite to your guest here. Do I sound that <laughs> that's No, 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 no. I'm talking about what Tim is going to sound like when he He's gets to go to the Napa sound Valley. That way either you'd Thanks, be surprised. Father. You know, we stay healthy a long time these days and uh, have a lot of fun. Uh, after the kids leave, there's no question. You know, like, by the way, you know, there's a lot of research to support what Tim is saying. I'm sad to say that you know people do find time with their children is very uh, much a drag. But you know, again, so so you could have had a better career. I mean, you know, you are going well, to but, have. But, but, but again, Kay, what kind of life is it for my kids? I mean, I work 12 to 16 hour days. My wife puts in, you know, 10 to 12 hour days. Our kids are at daycare. They see us for a couple hours at night. We shush them, go through their homework, fix them dinner, shove them off to bed because we all have to be up the crack of dawn to do our busy schedules all over again. So what kind of life really is it for them that they're constantly being rushed through life, and yet we have no time for even ourselves? I mean, we were just talking about this the other day. We went snowboarding for a couple hours, two hours, and had to hurry up and run back because the mountain, it's, you know, three to four-hour drive round trip. 
and we've got to get back, so kids got to be picked up by a certain time. And you know? and you would prefer n- not to have had the kids. You know, we love them to death, but if we if we said if we've had to do it all over again, we wouldn't do it because we could pick up, go to Reno, go snowboarding down there, go to Tahoe. We could fly to Cal. I travel a lot on business. I'm like, you know, my wife could come with me, but she can't because she's got to stay home, work, and take care of the kids and get them through school. And I travel all over the country quite frequently. I'm like, boy, great if you could have came to – I was just in San Francisco last week. I'm like, it would have been great if you could have came down with me, but she can't. Yeah, I was in Reno well, not that that's, that's long. That's true. Kind, but she can't. You're right. There are all kinds of things you can't do. I'm curious, though, that you have three children. Well, you know, you got to – you got to find time for something, I guess. That's the only <laughs> recreation we get. <laughs> Tim, thank you for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Holly on the Tom Lycus Show for our guest, Kay Heimowitz. Hello. Hi, my name's Holly, and I'm calling from the Riverside area in California. I have two boys with the same man. We've been together for 13 years, and I think it works out just fine. I just recently got a job. I'm back to work after staying home for six years with my youngest. And you know what? We are doing just fine. If I ever did get away from him, I do believe that I would let him have what he brought into it. Whatever I brought into it, he would. Ha- I would have. And whatever we brought in, uh, accumulated together, we would split down the middle. That's how I feel. Oh, well, I think that's great. I'm just wondering what you're doing listening to Tom. <laughs> uh, you know what? I love Tom. My husband, my, actually my husband, boyfriend, whatever you want to call him after 13 years, has got me in a loving Tom, and Tom, you're right on, and I just want to say you're, you're awesome, and I wish I could live your lifestyle, but I, I chose a different route. And um, I'm going to New York know? for the weekend, Holly. <laughs> you know what? Maybe for I'm- the weekend. Woo! I'm 38, and I'm uh, actually I'm from upstate New York in Albany, but um, I relocated when I was six, so I'm really a California girl. Um, I just want I, I'm on my way driving somebody back to Palm Springs right now, and I just had to call in because I think you guys are awesome talking about this because I, like I said, three weeks ago I just went back to work, and I don't know the kids are important, but you got to think of yourself first before you can even think of your children and i'm sorry to say that but that's how i feel well uh you know except they get sick and i mean things come up where yeah, they have to, like you know, that yeah, just, you, know, you know they come first in the sense that somebody's got to look after them they can't manage on their own so it is true that they cramp your style there's no question about it i wouldn't argue for one second and those years where they're most needy are very very difficult especially in today's economy uh i still wonder where you want to be uh when all is said and done you know when you're uh uh at my age in the late 50s or 60s and you look back and you say okay who's out there who cares about me because that's going to happen to you too you know it's not just me that this happened to you're you're definitely right and and, and i thank god right now that my mom and dad are here and take the boys every weekend for me oh, well, you know, what are you complaining about <laughs> i am not because i just wanted to call in and say i am and this is my my life and so anyway that's all I really wanted to say. All right, Holly. Thank you for that. I appreciate the call. Mike on the Tom Likas Show for Kay Heimowitz. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Mike. How you doing? Doing okay. All right. Hey, hello, Kay. Uh, I've just got a few comments. One is uh, it, it just annoys the crap out of me when people, uh, whether it be, you know, talk show hosts or, or the Doctor, what's her name on AM and or anybody else, uh, tell you that this is the paradigm you should strive to live for. Uh, I've I've lived my own life and I've done things when I wanted to and the way I wanted to, and it hasn't been prescribed by anybody else. Now, uh, with some people, because I don't make a lot of money right at the moment, would say, "Well, you know, you 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 really haven't succeeded, or you really haven't." But you know, uh, that's that's not how I view it. I've done, you know, I've, I've blown glass when I wanted to, and you know, I made laboratory equipment, and it was a lot of fun. I made really good money when I when it was fun, and when it started being a job, you know, then I decided to go somewhere else. And a lot of people would say, "Well, that's not being responsible." Yeah, and if you had kids, you wouldn't have the option of doing that uh, because uh, it's more important to bring home that paycheck. Then to do something that's fulfilling. Kay Heimowitz with City Journal. We appreciate her being with us. The Tom Likas Show.